The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to Man and Machine's Twin Motion launch event and our webinar um, this morning. I'd like to um, just welcome and introduce myself. Um, Nathan, um, my name is Nathan Brownswords. I'm the sales manager here at Man and Machine. I'm joined by um, the chair for today, Rob and Beals, our technical director. Um, and today we're going to look at an exciting new product, uh, Twin Motion. Um, and how I suppose why the team on this side are so excited about this product. Um, before I get into um, the actual products and hand over to Robin, um, I appreciate the last few months have been quite a, a tough uh, period for, for most companies, most individuals on the call. Um, so I know we have well, it's, it's good to talk to you and have some positive news um, to come through in, in terms of the, the new partnership and new product we've taken on. Um, so in terms of Twin Motion, um, with this this product, it's a very much a complementary tool to our kit bag um, and offerings that we hit, we have here at Man and Machine, and we're extremely excited to uh, to show you it. Uh, but just before we do, I'd like to introduce Man and Machine to people that are on the call for the first time that haven't had the um, or don't know us in, in too much detail. Um, so Man and Machine, we're a multinational organisation, a very large organisation, we have about a thousand staff. 200 person strong technical team. We span over 10 different countries and 50 different European locations. And um, the organization is split in terms of both our construction offerings and manufacturing side as well. And um, so, in terms of talking to you from both a how your organization works and also your supply chain, your subcontractors, and um, we have the specialisms in place um, and the and, and individuals that can really help you um, in your business. In terms of who we are from a software and technology point of view. Um, we are Autodesk partners, first and foremost. Um, we've been Autodesk partners and the largest partners across Europe for a number of years now, um, head and shoulders above any other organisation um, in terms of when you actually look at us from a, um, a European uh, point of view. Um, in terms of our size, it really helps us in terms of actually supporting you with the core products around, you know, say, your, your, your 2D, 3D modelling, um, your collaboration software, clash detection, visualization side as well. Um, and what that really stems um, or what's brought upon us over the past few years, um, and especially over the last five to ten years, um, is an offering in terms of our both our own software that we have. So plugins that are complementary to your Revit's, um, your inventors, um, both on the construction side, the architectural side, and also from actually manufacturing point of view. Um, naturally they're they're more akin to the European market and mainland Europe um, in particular. Um, but in terms of where that really sits us is we've slowly but surely been approached by other organisations to represent them, mostly on an exclusive level, um, but being able to offer their uh, products, their portfolios, and be able to train, consult, support on those tools to really help you end to end from conceptual design through to facilities management. Um, we can really help you from a technology point of view. Um, where we go above and beyond is with our um, relations with the people and your um, organisations such as the UK BIM Alliance and BSI. Um, we have technical members that sit in those uh, respective working groups that are really starting to actually come through and actually drive forward um, the digital and BIM adoption in the UK. Um, this also spans again globally in terms of some of the working groups and steering committees we sit on. Uh, but in terms of how we can support you, um, ultimately it's not just from a technology point of view, it's also um, and how we feel from a solutions and a workflow point of view. Um, but back to today. So what we're looking at is Twin Motion. So Twin Motion again is a visualization tool brought to you by Epic Games. Um, for those of you on the call that are, are familiar, are semi-familiar with the tool, it was released, I believe, last year, um, initially free of charge, um, because of, I think that in terms of the offering that was available, they wanted to test the market and see that they had um, the opportunity or they had the um they had the capability to really um take it into or away from the gaming side into um, the architectural and construction sites um in terms of what it offers for you i think that we're really we're really excited about it in terms of um the quality that it offers compared to some of the other tools in the market and also the ease of use um, but on that note i'll hand over to robin um and he will show you in a live demonstration how the tool can be used. Over to you, Rob. Perfect, thanks, Nathan. Um, and good morning, everyone. I hope you're all uh, well and keeping safe um, and trying to get back to whatever normal we're looking at now. Um, so just a couple of things before we start. 
Um, as we've handed over the presentation to myself, I hope that everyone can hear me and see my screen. Um, so if someone can just use the panel on the right hand side, just stick your hand in the air for me using the button that says raise hand just to show that you can hear me um, and see my screen. Perfect. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Alex. That's great. Um, cool. So whilst we're talking about that panel on the right hand side, um, nice open session this morning. So anyone that has any questions, um, I will come to answer them at the end. You have a questions section in that panel on the right hand side of your screen. So feel free to fire any questions that you have throughout the session and I'll pick those up at the end um, without any problems at all. Um, so Twin Motion, this is a product that um, I'm actually really excited about myself. Um, it's a really cool product, um, being a little bit of a self-confessed geek myself. Um, it uses the Epic Games um, and Unreal um, game engine. So um, it looks fantastic. It's very fast um, and actually it's really easy to use. Um, but on top of that, it really allows you to take the presenting of your model um, inside of um, an environment that links directly with Autodesk Revit to the next level. So um, we'll just go through some of the tools today. We're not going to talk about all of the tools in there um, because, quite frankly, we don't have the time. Um, but we just wanted to introduce the product and, and kind of show what it's all about and what it will allow you to do that's maybe different to some of the other tools out there. Um, so first and foremost, um, as you can see, I'm just sat inside of Revit 2021, um, also compatible with previous versions of Revit that you would expect it to be. So 2020, 19, 18, so on and so forth. Um, but actually any application that can export an FBX file, you can import them directly into Twinmotion. So that starts opening up workflows into other software, um, you know, out there on the market. You also have direct links to um, widely used software such as SketchUp, um, Rhino, um, and some of the other competitors to Revit as well. So um, yeah, re really well positioned product from that perspective. Um, and really easy to use. So I've got a, a relatively simple 3D model here um, of this, um, this block of flats. Um, and then all I've done, just to make today a little bit easier, I've just created a few surfaces for paths, roads, and, uh, and grass. Uh, I'll explain why a little bit later. But all I'm going to show is at the top of the screen, um, I've got the Twin Motion um, plugin. For those of you that want to run this with Revit 2021, um, just download the Revit 2020 add-in, uh, browse to the installation folder, and just drag and drop those files into the Revit 2021 add-in folder. Works a treat. Um, but just before we get started, we have a few settings here. Um, so Revit and Twinmotion will synchronize um, and create a link between the Twinmotion file and the Revit file. Um, so we do have some settings which allow us to control how that works. So for example, if you didn't want to export um, specific families, you can choose not to. If you want to export BIM data against the components and all of your attributes and metadata, you can. You can choose to merge components by their material or by their family. Um, as well as, as, as choosing you know, what kind of um, optimization, if any, we want on those particular um, components. For the purpose of today, I'm kind of leaving everything default, but I am saying that I would like to substitute Revit materials with Twinmotion materials, and where possible, I'd like to substitute Revit objects with Twinmotion objects if it identifies an ability to do so. Once I've done that, um, I've got two options. Number one, I can do a, an export, which will essentially export an FBX file, which I can do from Revit anyway through file and export. But I want to make my life easier. So I just get my 3D view to where I want it. And then I come up and say, see in twin motion. If I hit and see in twin motion, it will fire up the direct link and the synchronization options with twin motion. Um, as you can see in the background, this has launched my Steam VR. So this is fully VR supported as well, if you would like it to be. Um, I won't show that today because you won't obviously get the full effect of seeing VR when a you can't see me and you can't see what the headset sees. So I'll just stick with standard screen and screen. Um, but when Twin Motion launches up, we can merge with an existing project if we want to, or in this case, just choose to start a new project. It gives us the ability to change the way that we navigate. So if we want to match Revit or SketchUp or anything else, we can. I'm going to leave everything as default and just let that synchronize the geometry across. 
And then essentially what you get, if I just zoom out, it's not going to be quite as quick as it is on my screen because it's got to obviously translate over the internet and, uh, and, and compress through the, the video that you're watching through the live stream. Um, so on here, this is pretty much real time. So I can move around with WSA and D or my arrow keys um, and use my mouse to basically have a look around the model. And, you know, this is kind of nothing new. Um, this kind of functionality to be able to view a model in real time is has been around for a little while. Um, and there are some fantastic tools in the market, um, which we also have available, um, which which give us this functionality. But the difference here is because we are in a game engine, uh, because we are outside of Revit, we have the ability to do things that otherwise wouldn't necessarily be difficult, but would mean that we have to follow new workflows. For instance, I want to come over here um, and just really present this um, this model where it would be in reality. So uh, perhaps on this side of the road, I want to put some foliage, um, some, some wild grass, some trees. Maybe I want to show that there's some people walking down the street and some cars moving down the street before I start focusing on the look and feel of the building. And whilst this is possible in applications that sit directly inside of Revit, it means you have to actually add things into your Revit model, which you otherwise might not want to do. So all I'm going to do is just move this toolbar out of my way, um, is select this element of grass. Um, on the right hand side, I can open up, I've got a hierarchy essentially of my entire model. Um, and I'm going to isolate this particular piece of grass that I have selected. Um, just to basically say, I just want to work on that piece of grass and only that piece of grass at this point in time. And with that active, I'm going to come down into my context menu at the bottom here. So I have a number of menus. Yes, I have a hierarchy. I've got a materials and objects fly out at the top. And I've got a simple toolbar at the bottom, which allows me to do everything from importing several files at once, um, playing with the context of the scene, the weather dynamics of the scene, which we'll come to later. We're going to start off with the context. And I want to essentially make my life easy to paint some vegetation um, on this surface that I have. So I'm going to open up my vegetation paint tools. And I'm just going to drag and drop a couple of components in from my object library. So let's pick a, a horse chestnut. Um, let's maybe pick um, one of these trees. Let's pick up a um, something quite specific. Let's go with a blackthorn and let's go with a, I don't know, maybe an olive tree. Why not? Uh, an oak. And then let's finish off with maybe a different type of oak that will look quite nice. So I can build up um, a paintbrush with different components on there. I can drop back up a level, um, maybe go into my grass and say, um, I want to have some 3D grass on there. Maybe for the purpose of this, we're going to go with um, maybe some sort of semi-dry um, wild grass over here. Um, and then perhaps I'll come down and just grab maybe some violets and some daisies to essentially build up a, a paintbrush. Now, once I have that, each of these have their own settings. So I can come in and say, well, I want my wild grass to have a really high density so it completely covers the surface. Uh, maybe I want a few more horse chestnuts, um, a few less olive trees, a few less violets, um, and a few less daisies, for example. And you can configure that however it is that you want. Um, and then literally, we can grab either a paintbrush or an eraser. Um, I can grab the paintbrush, change the diameter, maybe I'll bump that up to 15 meters, and it literally gives me this on my brush. Now, um, depending on how well my microphone is working, you may notice my fans have really kicked into action on my workstation laptop now. Um, but because this is a game engine, all of this is working really well off my standard Revit spec machine. Um, so I'm just running off a Dell Precision 15-inch um, workstation. Yes, it's got plenty of RAM, a decent processor and a decent graphics card, as you would expect for any Revit engineer. Um, but what we can do is basically paint vegetation directly onto that surface. So if I come really into here and have a look, what we get is quite phenomenal. We get animated grass, animated flowers, trees that look absolutely fantastic, um, which even have roots, which is quite cool. Um, and this is great because that was so easy to do. And if I want to have specific areas of, of interest or, or different detail, I can just launch those tools up again, start a new vegetation paint and say, 
okay, well, actually, what I'd like to see is maybe um, some poppies. Maybe I want those poppies to be um, lesser diameter, um, but maybe I want them to be quite dense. And then I can grab my paintbrush and just make some areas where I can have some specific details. And I can play around with the densities, chop and change them as I go through, um, and really make this however it is I want um, to really quickly start bringing some life to my scene. Um, it's a joy to work with, and it just works quick. And actually, if you compare this to placing these components directly inside of Revit, which can slow your, your main model down, they're things that you might not want to do. Absolutely, we can also drag and drop individual components, which can be individually moved, rotated, and scaled up and down. Um, so again, if you want to add individual detail objects, um, individual areas of, um, of interest, um, we can just come in and do that just by using, again, this same area where I was dragging and dropping trees. We can drag and drop individual trees. We can drag and drop individual areas of rocks. Um, we can scale them up and down. We can rotate them and move them around and, and basically make any kind of area that you might want to make um, inside of this system. Um, and this is similar to other tools out there. Um, Lumion, I'm sure many of you have heard and, and seen, um, which is a very high end tool. Um, but this, if you look at the um, accessibility at this from a pricing perspective, for example, um, you know, there's a lot that this can do um, that compares to that um, much, much more accessible and easier to use. So I've just gone in and added some components and started to build that section up. What I'm going to do now um, is just do a right click. Um, let's just turn off my isolation to bring the rest of the model back now. Um, and let's just come out of this area and maybe now focus on this road area. I'm just going to do a quick save before we go any further. Um, let's just flip to Emotion 1. It just saves a simple uh, version of his own file. What's really nice with that is you actually have a direct link with Revit. So if I was to go back to Revit or indeed any of the other applications it supports, I could add geometry or edit geometry in Revit and it will resynchronize with Twinmotion, even with Twinmotion open. So you can actually make live edits similar to what you can do inside of the like of Enscape, for example. You can do a live edit in Revit, hit save, and then within a couple of seconds, it will update inside of Twinmotion, which is really nice. Um, so moving on to this road section, I've got a path, some curb stones and a simple road. Um, with those, yes, they've brought across a, a texture from Revit, but I can use this library on the left-hand side. Jump into my materials browser. Um, let's go to ground materials, some man-made, drag and drop some asphalt onto the road. If I zoom in, um, these are all defaults when motion materials. They look really nice. They have a, a default bump map on them, but they are customizable. So again, you get really easy drag and drop tools to apply a material. And then if you want to change the color, you have a color option. Move the reflection up and down to change the reflectivity of that surface. We can change the scale of the texture really easily to make that, um, that asphalt look bigger or smaller, should I want to. I can look at the individual settings of the scale and change the rotation, the start axis. Now, all of these are, um, are really straightforward bits of functionality that just work off sliders, even as far as changing how coarse that material looks with the bump map is just moving a slider up and down. They really have made this application work um, as easily as they can. Um, I'm going to add another asphalt material. Um, maybe we'll just go with um, this one to the, uh, the center marks there. Come over to the side. Um, we'll just add one onto this, uh, this curb stone. Uh, this one will do. Make sure the scaling looks OK. Yep, happy with that. And maybe we'll just drop that down to about 1.5 actually rather than 2. Uh, and then we'll maybe put some pavement tiles here on the path, uh, and maybe scale those up to two and a half, maybe, um, to make them look the way that we want. And instantly, we start to get something that is already looking a little bit nicer. And we've not even touched the uh, the building from Revit yet, um, which is great. Now, before we actually start doing that, just to really show this off, everything that's going on in the background is updating in real time. So, yes, we've started putting some information on there, but if we want to, I can get an idea of, OK, well, this isn't quite how I want this to be shown because actually I'm presenting this um, in the autumn. Um, so I can start moving this slider for the season 
um, to show the trees and the grass uh, and the conditions in autumn. Um, I can move the weather slider to make it rain in the autumn or as we're in England, make it rain in the summer. Um, if we move that across to the winter, um, it will make it snow. Um, and then obviously we can um, we can show the trees. If we keep moving that, the trees will drop their leaves and, uh, and be trees in the winter. Um, so you really do have a lot of functionality here right at your fingertips to be able to quickly chop and change, show young trees if this is a new development, older trees as they, uh, as they grow over time. It really is a pleasure to work with. If we move on to um, this side of the road now, I want to add some detail to uh, these bits of grass and then move on to this building. So um, again, let's just use a control select to grab these two. Um, let's just isolate them to make our life a little bit easier. Um, and with those, once again, let's maybe open up our vegetation paint. Um, this time, perhaps what I'll do is not worry too much about trees. Um, we'll put a, a lawn material down. That lawn material, we will uh, whack the density right up to about 100. Um, and then maybe we'll put some clovers down um, and some dandelions. So uh, add some clovers, density down to about 6%. Uh, maybe some dandelions, typically. Uh, there we go, dandelions, and we'll put the dandelions down as well to quite a low percent. And again, we can just grab that paintbrush, change the density as we see fit. So um, a 20 meter diameter on that. And again, we can just literally brush as if this was Microsoft Paint. Um, I'm not being overly accurate for the purpose of today. I guess if you were actually making this project, you would get really up and close and personal with that um, that Revit building and make sure you're not going across into the path or overlapping the building. Um, I'm not really too fussed about that today. I just want to show you how quickly this is to work with. Um, alongside that, uh, maybe I'll go onto the lawn, go into the settings and say that I want to add some stripes. Um, so maybe we'll have um, some stripes on there. Um, maybe we'll... Uh, just drop the size of the grass down a little bit. Um, and then not to slow the scene down too much, on top of those two surfaces, I'll also add a, a generic flat grass material as well, um, just to bring it to life. And again, what that's gonna give you is um, some 3D grass, um, some weeds and some clover. Um, so we've got something that's starting to take shape, which is great. Again, I'm just gonna put another quick save on there. And I'm just gonna say that I want to end my isolation. Um, so from here, let's move on to the building. A building works in very much the same way. We can just drag and drop both materials and objects um, onto different components inside of Revit. It groups things quite nicely. So because I've used the same wall type all the way around the building, it's already changed this to um, a twin motion material, but I want this to be a, a different brick. So I can go to my material browser. I can go into my bricks, go and choose a type of brick that I am happy to use. Um, so I don't know for the purpose of this, um, maybe we'll use a nice uh, clean brick. Maybe we'll go with, I quite liked this one, clean brick four. And just drag and drop it onto the outside of the building. You can see that changes all of those external walls. Um, and then if you don't quite like the scaling on here, if you want to scale it up, just grab the slider and just scale those bricks until there are eyeballing the right kind of size. Um, once on there, I'm going to do the windows as well. Um, the white looks okay, to be honest, for the PVC on those windows, but I'm going to change the grass, um, the glass to, to some, um, maybe we'll go two-sided glass for the purpose of this and place that down. Um, we could go up and do the roof. So let's come up to the roof level. It is um, pretty much a flat roof on there. Uh, let's go back and maybe we're going to grab a roof covering. Um, that one will do for the actual roof itself. And then if we go back and just grab some concrete or something similar around the outside. There we go, and that will be fine there. Good, happy days. So we've got a, we've got a building. Um, yes, we've added in some components to the outside, which is fantastic. Um, what we're gonna do now is just go in and start detailing the inside. So um, perhaps whilst I'm here, I wanna bring this to life a little bit. So I'm gonna come in and add some, uh, some landscape um, or some um, some objects, sorry. Uh, let's go some street objects, add a couple of planters in. 
um, and maybe just grab a planter, place him there, give him a quick rotate, and place another one there. Obviously, you could do this inside of Revit and add very specific ones. These could, these could be objects downloaded offline. Um, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to throw a couple of those down. Um, once we're there, uh, we'll also maybe go in and add a flag to the outside of the building. Stick it on here. Uh, that flag can have a custom texture if you want to. Um, you can control silly things like uh, the speed of the wind, the direction of the wind, um, you know, everything that you would expect. So maybe we'll just have a, a little bit of wind on there just so it's not uh, completely limp. Um, another save on quickly there's no auto save so um, naturally anything like this where you're really pushing your machine with regards to render power stick regular save on is going to be a, a friend to you um, so let's head into the building I'm not overly fussed about um, changing the internals of the whole building again we're, we're semi pushed for time so um, just to show you that we can walk around this model uh, again hopefully it's coming through relatively smooth online um, it's a lot quicker on my machine, obviously, because I'm not streaming over the internet. But uh, when we come through, I'm just going to come into this um, this flat here and just start changing some components. So let's come into this uh, this lounge area. And the first thing I want to do um, is I've got a nice fireplace here. Um, I'm just going to maybe detail this up. So uh, materials. Let's come in and grab um, our materials patch. Uh, let's come in and, and grab some stones. Uh, maybe grab a, a nice stacked stone material and drag that on that type of wall. Um, again, we could scale this up. I want those to be um, relatively large, so I'm going to go up to a scale of two. Whilst we're in the same area, uh, maybe I want some tiles for the inside of this fireplace. Um, it's not the most accurate in the world. There's no ventilation, but um, just threw it together relatively quickly for the purpose of this, just to show some specific functionality. So let's come in and uh, find my tile coverings. I've got some nice ceramic tiles down the bottom, which might look quite nice in that environment somewhere. There we go. Uh, so I'm just going to drag and drop those ceramic tiles in. And again, we can just play with the scale until we're happy with, uh, with the way we look. We can change the material wrapping if we want to. A bit pushed for time today, so I'm not too fussed about that. But we can remap the materials um, and have them placed over flat surfaces, spherical surfaces, surfaces. Um, square surfaces, so on and so forth. Um, I will just rotate that round because I do want them to be um, sideways on rather than um, rather than lengthways for the purpose of that. Um, but yeah, really easy to change that should you want to. Um, just go ahead and change however you see fit. Um, so once we're happy with the, um, the general look and feel on there and we're, we're getting something that we're pleased with, what we can do then is start bringing detail in here. Um, and this is again where the fact that we're running a game engine is, is brilliant because I can come in and, and grab an object, go even in some particles and um, place a fire in the fireplace. Um, that fire, maybe I want that to be scaled up a little bit. So let's just grab the scale tools and just um, scale them up a little bit. Um, I don't have any fireplace objects in here. So I'm going to use my initiative and add some miscellaneous components. Uh, maybe we'll add a big pile of wood and scale it down significantly. Maybe we'll move them into position with my movement tools down a little bit. Try and roughly eyeball it so it's in line with the fire. So it looks like a wood fire, something like that. And then maybe we want to uh, I don't know, a few rocks down the bottom or around the outside. Uh, again, we can do that. So, you know, yes, you could go in and make something quite specific. I'm just using my initiative here and, and kind of a bit like I would if I was using Max and uh, and, and Arnold or Max and V-Ray, which I use pretty regularly. Um, I'm just using my initiative to make something look the way that I want it to look. Um, you know, these rendering applications, you want to make something look good. You put it together to make it look the way you want it to look. Um, it's not having to be massively accurate at the end of the day. So something like that, I'm happy with that. We've got something that represents a, a wood fire with maybe a bit of ash down the bottom or some burnt bits of wood, uh, which are represented by the stones. Um, and that looks really cool. Maybe a little bit small for the, uh, the enclosure there, but I'm happy. 
Um, what we can then do is, is start detailing some more. So this is where you do have some additional functionality, um, which is really nice. So in here, all of these walls are built using the same um, partition type. So naturally, if I throw on a material, um, let's go to wall coverings. Let's just say that I want to have, um, I don't know, some bare plasterboard. You can see in the background that it changes all the other walls. Um, so if I wanted to have um, a, a painted wall in here, so let's have um, maybe uh, let's have a satin paint across all my walls uh, and maybe I guess we'll have that a nice man and machine orange. Um, not that you'd ever paint your walls a nice man and machine orange, but for the purpose of this, I'm going to um, let's drop the reflectivity down so it's not quite as shiny. Uh, but I want this to be um, like a detail wall. So I can grab that wall and then inside of the browser, I can actually copy that component and paste it in um, so that I actually have a, um, an instance of that wall directly uh, inside of um, Twitmotion. And what that means is I can come in and give that um, particular wall a, um, a different covering. So let's go into... Oh, where should we go? Let's have a nice plastics. We've got a pretty cool 3D wall in here. So I'm going to grab that 3D wall. I've hidden the wrong version of the wall. My apologies. Hide that one. Um, let's just grab that 3D wall, stick it on there, up the scale. So we can start to, um, to detail um, specifically some of these um, individual walls or individual components just by essentially copying and pasting them inside of Twinmotion and, uh, and playing around with them. So we can kind of make this however it is that we want. Whilst I'm in here, um, let's just stick down some uh, some some floor. Uh, maybe we'll go with we've got a marble floor tile or something that might look quite nice. Maybe they're a little bit too over the top. Let's go with a bit of polished concrete. So go to concrete. We look down. We've got a nice polished concrete. We'll use that for the floor. Perfect. Um, maybe we'll come in and do. Um, a different type of polished concrete perhaps for um, the um, uh, the column here again I'm just going to copy and paste it so, so we can make it uh, individual rather than taking the uh, the wall build up because it's using the same material basically inside of Revit so I don't want it to use the same material I want it to use the same material as my floor so really you've got the freedom to kind of do whatever you want and then with that, we can then start adding objects. Yes, it will bring objects across from Revit, but I want to come into my house and maybe add some um, more rendered look and feel stuff. So um, I can pull in a sofa that's got some soft furnishings on it um, and I can essentially drop that into position, scale it up and down. Um, again, if you've got specific models inside of, uh, inside of Revit, by all means, bring them across. But we have the ability to, um, to come in here and essentially place individual components in. Um, so we'll place down um, that sofa. Um, it'd be nice if you could flip it, but I don't think we can. Um, we'll come in and maybe add a TV in the absolute worst place to add a TV, which is going to be above the fireplace, so it will blow up. But um, we don't mind too much about that for the purpose of this. So we'll add a TV on there. Uh, maybe we'll have some speakers either side, like so. Um, maybe we'll have uh, a bit of a table, so let's go and put uh, maybe a shelf on here, spin that around and just tuck it up against the wall. I'm doing everything pretty quick on the fly today, not spending massive amounts of, uh, of, of time um, thinking about what I'm doing, uh, but I'm really just showing you how quickly we can start to, to add things and get a really nice looking image. And this could go throughout the, the entire apartment. So. You know, if I wanted to, um, when I'm detailing things like the kitchen, I can come in here and you know, I can add in uh, an orchid in here in the kitchen. Uh, I could come and say that I wanted to uh, specifically go into my kitchen area um, and add some tableware here. Um, I could come in and add some uh, some a bagel on the side or a donut on the plate if I wanted to. You notice it picks up the 3D surface, which is really nice. So you really can place these donuts and, <laughs> and other objects wherever you want them. Um, so I'll put the donut on my plate there with my glass of red wine and my uh, randomly a bagel. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll come in and maybe add a chair. So let's add uh, 
go to living room, go to chairs, and I should be able to find a stool or something here that we can just place down like so. So you kind of get the idea. We can pretty much do whatever it is that we want to do in here to start building this up. And we've got a load of objects um, to build that, a load of particles, different bathrooms, showers, um, particles for showers so that I can get, you know, um, actually show the showers on if I want to um, or show a waterfall or whatever it might be. So we've got all sorts of different stuff. Um, you know, it, it really is down to how much time you want to spend doing your renders and putting things together. I'm running this on ultra quality, um, but when it comes to wanting to create an output, you change your context to make it to um, look how it is you want it to look. I'm not going as far as adding custom lights in here today, because quite frankly, we don't need to for the purpose of this, but we can change camera, field of view, um, depth of, um, of field, um, to add on um, blur for the camera, for example. With that, we can then start playing around where the focal depth is. Um, and just being able to do that just with a slider um, and get things to update really quickly. You know, it just makes things a pleasure to use. Architecture two-point perspective, a bit of vignetting around the outside. Um, and essentially, we can just play around with this and make it look however it is we want to look. And maybe we'll go on and, uh, and make it uh, a little bit rainy outside. Um, so on and so forth you know this this it kind of speaks for itself as i say we can output images the image outputs have the ability to basically go around and create images from different camera positions we can do panoramas um so google cardboard or anything like that if you want to um vr outputs uh, video outputs presenter mode which will jump between a load of different views um, and we can also export images, panoramas, videos, percenter mode, so on and so forth, to do a more traditional render. Um, but typically, you know, this works real time if you wanted to, as you can see. A um, couple of other things just before we start to wrap this up um, is I've just worked with some basic flat surfaces here just to keep things nice and straightforward. Um, but you can really go to town if you wanted to. So um, to really bring this to life, and start to finish something off. Um, all I'm gonna do is go back to my top level, add a, a flat landscape in, just to the side of the model here. That's gonna add um, a, um, a sculptable surface for me that I can start to work with. Um, and with that surface, let's just put a quick save on, we get the ability to both paint it and sculpt it. So I've got sculpting tools, and with those sculpting tools, I can change diameters and intensities and literally sculpt mountains or indeed um, slightly too much um, dips with those dips we could come in and um, add in some water so I can come in and turn on um, my oops bear with me weather effects turn on the ocean make sure we don't flood ourselves. Um, I'll just show you this, by the way, we put ourselves underwater. The deep we are underwater, the darker it is. If we take the water above us, the camera will eventually dry off. Really cool. Um, sorry, that's my inner geek coming out again. Apologies for that. Um, but we can, minus 0 0.5, we can start to create, you know, ponds, rivers, lakes, so on and so forth, just like you would expect. Um, and then if you want to, with that landscape, we can paint it. And we can start painting um, gravel again with a paintbrush on here to, to put some gravel in there, put in some some muddy grass, put in some mossy rocks, so on and so forth, um, and really sort of bring this to life. So um, that just leaves me with um, two other things, really. We've shown the vegetation paint. We could paint all of this up really quickly. Um, so again, if I select that, I've still got all of those options there. So I could just grab my paintbrush again and start painting other areas of my model um, to really sort of start taxing this. You notice it's a little bit slower than it was initially because I've got a lot more going on inside of my model, um, but we can come in and, and grab any, any of those paint tools and sort of redo them. Um, the other thing we can really do, which is nice, is little things like, yes, I can add characters, but I want to add animated characters. Um, and again, I have a tool that, that I can do that with. Under my context, um, one thing I'm not showing, by the way, is you've got urban tools. If this was um, in a location, I can actually bring up um, a, a 
uh, an internet mapping serv serv service and get it to, to draw representations of buildings, fields, water, roads and paths and put that into twin motion for me to then um, really bring to life. Um, I haven't done that today because it does a big download and I don't want the uh, the internet connection to be um, to harmed by that. So, but what I will show is the character paths, um, just to draw a character path that spanning um, maybe along here and then maybe around this corner and then off into the distance over there. Give that a couple of seconds and what that will do is based on these options it will generate characters that walk along that path we can change the type of characters uh, we can change the, the clothing that they're wearing so let's just have some generic street um, we can change the width um, the uh, the density of that obviously the, the denser it is the more people that you'll get the less dense it is the less people that you'll get you can get them to work the other way stop walking if you want them to stay still um, you know, you, you've kind of, again, got the flexibility to, to work with this however it is that you want um, and have multiple of these working in different directions, however it is that you see fit. Um, and you can continue that path on or, you know, start drawing a new character path um, and just pen that in wherever you want it. We do the same thing with vehicles. So I can choose to add a vehicle path. Um, just trace down the middle of this uh, this road that I've got here. So from about there-ish down to about there-ish. Um, and again, we'll then say uh, that we want to have two lanes, not 12 lanes. That will probably not make my machine very happy. Two lanes. Uh, we can just tweak the lane offset a little bit with uh, with an eyeball, um, put them in different directions, one lane. Um, change the density if we want to, change the speed. So maybe let's go 35 kilometers an hour. Um, we'll go um, and select that path. And we will just move it so it's a little bit more central and essentially if we just get down now into this uh this area that we created earlier we can now look up on our building from a nice environment from the outside with objects moving um we can take still image from there we can take a, a, a video output from there and really you know the the world is your oyster at the end of the day you can do all as much as you would want, as little as you would want to get an output in inside. Uh, and again, uh, if I just save this, jump back into Revit, um, go and find my Revit model um, and maybe just make a change. I'm going to take that window and delete it, uh, for example, and save the Revit model. Press that I want to see that into Motion. Give it a couple of seconds and this will update with your twin motion model and now you can see that that uh, window no longer exists in the distance so you've got all the functionality that you need um, it's very accessible it's easy to use um, it allows you to do some stunning things in there to, to really you know bring these models to life and, uh, and and really play with you know your sun sun animation um, whatever it is that you want to do so um, and really, that's kind of all I wanted to show. It's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. Um, we've not focused on anything specific, but shown you um, quite a bit. So what I will do is um, say thank you for watching so far. But I'm just going to have a look to see what kind of questions that we've had, if any, throughout the session. Um, so I'm just going to open this up um, and see what we've got. So uh, let's come down and see what we have. So I uh, had a, a question from um, Cronus about if the Revit model change, will it update? As you saw at the end of the session, yeah, absolutely. Um, just did a quick update of the session, um, the Revit model at the end of the session there. Um, I did a simple delete, but if that was additional geometry, new geometry or edited geometry, yes, it will update. And yes, it will update without losing your work, which is fantastic. Um, so that was great. Um, 
another couple of questions. Uh, people working with cloud models, the direct link doesn't work. So that's a question from Uram. Um, or ORAM, sorry if I haven't pronounced that correctly. Um, I haven't tried this with a cloud model from BIM 360 yet. Um, you probably need to have a local version of that to be able to get it to sync across because it's it's stored in the cloud, so it wouldn't necessarily identify it in the same way. The way I usually work when I'm working with a render model is I'll have a separate version of the Revit model anyway because I might have gone a little bit higher on level of detail um, on individual objects inside of Revit to really bring them to life. I might have modeled some blinds, for example, in a Revit window or, or really gone to town with um, a deck to actually model the individual bits of wood rather than a single um, component inside of Revit. So um, there's an argument there for having a separate Revit model for a, a true render model. Um, but yeah, you're probably going to struggle if you're going directly from a Boom 360 shared model. Um, we have a question from Miles. Can you export the scene to a web link? For people to view without the need for uh, for twin motion um so i'll take that question offline miles i don't think so at this point um it's possible to 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 view through the web um you've got a lot of different export options as i say to be able to to export this out but again the the positioning of of this product price wise it's extremely accessible um, if you compare it to the products that it's competing competing against. Um, so yeah, if you look at it from a project perspective, a lot of our customers out there are, are basically sticking a handful of licenses of this product against the project um, and handing them out for people that need them because you are talking um, very accessible pricing wise. But I'll take that offline and, and talk to the guys at Epic and see if there's any um, any plans for that in the future. Uh, Eleanor, is the VR output a single static camera location or can I export the entire model for a navigation? Similar answer to that one, Eleanor. Um, so we can get a VR output, so a VR video, for example, um, to get the whole scene out again, similar to the previous answer. Um, I'll see if there's any uh, any options in there. A uh, question about similarities with 3ds Max. Um, obviously, Max is a completely separate application, um, very high-end photorealistic rendering, which will take a lot of um, time to get a perfect result. Um, so a workflow, I guess, yes, is similar, but in here, you're working much quicker. Um, Cronus, is there any tutorials? Um, Epic have got hundreds of, I say hundreds, tens of tutorials i think it's hundreds of tutorials online check out their youtube channel um when you sign up to twin motion you get a load of um previous webinars that they've done by all means come and ask us a question but lots of tutorials online to get you started with the basics and to take you through the more advanced stuff as well so check out the uh, the twin motion site Eleanor, yes, absolutely. You can do um, custom materials. So you can add your own materials into the library, um, change what's there, no problem at all. And anything that you do add, you can um, you can add it into a library, even if it's a very specific component with a very specific material set up, that component you can grab through the browser on the right hand side, right click it and just add it into your um, into your library for future use. So absolutely, yes. Uh, David Wood, can you export geometry and bring it into other software? Um, I guess the question would be, what software are you wanting to come out of? Um, so you've you've got export options. I don't believe you can export an actual model out. Um, probably a question to take offline, David, and see what specifically um, you're looking at taking it into um, at the other end. So let's uh, let's catch up on that one outside. Um, question from Richard. Absolutely, you can change the seasons. We showed that earlier on in the presentation. Um, basically, just come into the weather and, and say, I want to make it autumn um, and I want to make it rainy um, or I want to make it winter and I want to make it snowing. Um, so trees are gold, apart from this one for some reason. Um, in, the, uh, in the autumn, it snows in the winter um, and the trees lose their uh, vegetation. So absolutely, yes, you can. Um, and yet, the wind as well we showed with the flag earlier so if we just get that flag on in the distance the wind is there and absolutely we can come in and, and go into the weather uh, go into the effects keep your eye on the flag we can change the uh, the direction of the wind and we can change the wind speed as well so if you want a hurricane we can get a hurricane if you want no wind we can have no wind 
you can see it's also affecting the uh, the uh, the sky there as well with regards to the clouds. Um, so yeah, um, I think the only thing actually that I wanted to show that I didn't. How cool is that? Look at the cars. They make marks in the snow. Love it. Sorry, inner geek again. I apologize for my inner geek. It comes out far too often. Um, let's go back to the weather and make it sunny. Um, just the last thing really to show is the decals. I meant to show them earlier. So in the materials, um, if we come across into uh, objects and decals, we've got a load of decals here. Um, so we can add in um, things like zebra crossings, road markings really easily inside of here. If you didn't want to put them in inside of um, um, Revit, as I have with the center marks, uh, we can kind of add decals really quickly. And that just really allows you to bring life into your scene. So um, even as far as, um, you know, the kids playing hopscotch outside, um, we've seen a lot of that during the lockdown, rainbows on the floor, hopscotch on the floor. Um, you can go in here and change the opacity to make it look like it's been washed away. Um, you can add puddles, which actually look like puddles, and, and yeah, as you would expect. Um, things like graffiti, if you want to add graffiti, um, patches of cement, um, patches of cracks and things like that in the asphalt. Um, yeah, it is a pleasure to work with once again, um, and hopefully that's come across. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of you know, where I wanted to take the session. Um, the product is still really new. I mean, it's been out there for a little while, um, but it's it's still really new. Um, head online and look at the public roadmap because you can go on there and request features. The guys are very responsive um, and, and go out there and, um, um, and take a lot from the user world. So um, give us your feedback, give Epic your feedback, um, really hope that that's been useful today uh, and enjoyable and a bit of a break from um, the usual kind of thing that you see on these webinars. Hopefully, I've not been too geeky and overexcited about things, but um, what can I say? It's a great product. So hopefully that's come across. But um, thank you ever so much for your time. Taking an hour out of your busy schedules is, uh, is hugely appreciated. So thank you. The session will be on YouTube probably in the coming days if you want to rewatch it. Um, any questions about pricing? Um, training, anything like that, get in touch. Um, and we will catch you all again soon. Stay safe, keep washing your hands, and uh, yeah, see you next time. Cheers, guys. Goodbye.